Your takeaway from that game last night was what? I mean, how crazy is that Eric Spolster has never won Coach of the Year? Because, like, year after year, the performance that he puts on as a head coach, he's clearly one of the best to, to, to ever do it, really, and one of the best head coaches. That's why he got the contract extension that he got, um, essentially a lifetime deal in Miami. So, to me, it's Eric Spolster. Without Jimmy Butler for this series, the adjustments that they have to make, they're playing smaller, they're, they're spacing the floor. It was like they were, they were all designed to shoot threes. Bam out of bio, obviously can spread the floor a little bit himself as well now from, from mid-range, but 23 three-pointers, franchise record, and Tyler Hero, we have to give him credit, missed all of the playoffs last year after uh, his hand injury, but now he comes back, uh, first player in Heat history with 10 plus assists and five three-pointers made, so they've had a ton of players come through there. So Tyler Hero stepping up, that's the type of role that they have always envisioned with him, being able to pass, score, uh, really affect the game at three different levels. And so they had all five starters in double figures. Celtics only had three players in double figures. So the Celtics will need to get other players. Drew Holiday had an off night. Chris Porzingis had an off night. So they're going to need guys to step up. And think about how much of like a plug and play the Miami Heat are. They're missing Rozier too. We haven't even talked about him. That's why they bring him in here for the playoffs for another score, for another threat. They're missing Josh Richardson. Patty Mills didn't play. So they still have so many valuable guys on the bench. But it doesn't matter because guys like Martin step up. Now Tyler Hero is healthy and he's showing flashes of why he's a cornerstone in this franchise. No Jimmy Butler, it, it doesn't matter. They have this new guy named Jovic who all of a sudden is just like this, this impactful player who can kind of do everything and versatile on the court. So it doesn't matter who's on the floor for the Miami Heat. They're the way that they play and the way that they're coached, they always have a chance to win. And crazy. if it doesn't matter who's on the floor, I think that hurts Eric Spolstra's opportunity to win Coach of the Year. When you're talking about a plug and play team, you're talking really? about a collective, you're talking about heat culture, you're not talking about individual accolades or anything like that. This is a system that you can plug guys in. I think that that harms them when it comes to individual accolades. And if this team were fully healthy all season long, there's no way in hell they'd be the eighth seed. You know no, what I mean? So no like, chance. When you're an eighth seed, you can't get coach of the year votes, right? So this is a team that's always good in the postseason, but when, when if they get a top, it is crazy still that he hasn't been coached. It's kind of crazy that he never has. Yeah, like it's like, one thing to maybe he doesn't get it repeatedly because we all have fatigue. Maybe but with the, the big three years, he was, he was deserving of one. Doing those 100%. Years. Yeah, that's, that's interesting to me. And now we we'll probably just assume he's one of the best and we don't think about him as an award winner. But, he's uh, getting paid like one of the best, though. Good for him. And he is one of the best. Yeah. And Jimmy Butler, also one of my favorites. Um, never, ever disappoints. Trolled the Celtics immediately after this one. <laughs> put his head on Jalen Brown. Remember this fun <laughs> quote from last year, don't let us get one after the Celtics found themselves down big. Well, we all know how that all ended for Miami moving forward. How much do we just love that See, he's sitting there you on know this? Funny. What did we say about the Tari Eason thing when he was trolling without playing? Hey, Jimmy. But now Jimmy Butler is doing but it and he's not playing and it's no funny. No bulletin board material, Jimmy. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's funny it's when funny he does when it. It's funny when he does it. It, but it wasn't funny when Tari. Uh, he's proven. You know, well, yeah, he hasn't earned it's it yet. Yeah, 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 it's it's reputation. Yeah, it's reputation. It is. I'm on the I'm on the same page. But if I, I, I again, if I'm funny. the Miami Heat, though, don't wake these guys up. They're a good team yeah. within itself. We don't need them uh, motivated, and you're not playing. Yeah. Again, at the end of the day, this this Boston Celtics team is elite. There's a reason that they had the season that they had. So if I'm Jimmy, if I'm anybody on the team, I'm not giving them anything <laughs> extra. Too late. Too late. We got it. To motivate to do this and. Yeah, uh, this is, I don't, I, it's hilarious, but I don't think it's the smartest idea. Can I just say this, though? I don't fear Boston with a, with a troll like this the way I would fear Miami with a troll like that. Like, for some you reason. Think they take it too personal. I, I, yeah, I don't think they have that same sort of, like, petty, let's go kill them. Uh, Whereas Jimmy Butler, I think they it, do. It's there. I don't think they have the reputation for it, but it's there. You think it's think there? about it. This quote came from Jalen Brown. Uh, yeah. It, it's an, it's an, a, a Boston Celtics original. So these guys are a little bit more petty than they get credit for. We, will, we shall see. Uh, last night, Tatum and Brown combined for 61 points. And they still lost at home, as we know. Uh, they were, before that, 37-4 and four mm -hmm. during the season. Here's my only thing when we say, should you panic? Sure, of course not. It's one and one, Lou. But if you're, the, if you're the Boston Celtics or Boston Celtics fans and you see the result of this game last night, there has to be something in your brain that goes, you, oh, God. Not again. No, we just, they just got to tighten up. Again, they, uh, Miami had to have a record-breaking night to get that done. 
Uh, can you depend on them to make 23 uh, three-pointers again in that game? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, they shot the hell out of it last night. But I think Drew, Drew Holiday is going to play better. I think Porzingis is going to play better. We talk about their, their bench and their depth. I think Pritchard and, and Al Horford is going to give them give them good minutes. Hauser is a guy that can knock down shots. They've yet to do that. And I think these guys wake up at some point in this. And I think you need a game like this to open your eyes up and, and lock guys back in. So. If I'm the Boston Celtics, I'm not concerned at all. We know the next couple games is on the road down in Miami, but I think we're still in good shape. Yeah, this is a good, humble check for them that they can be beat and that they, they're they not, you know, this powerhouse team that can just go out there mm -mm. and just go through the motions and win games. The Heat aren't that type of opponent. The Heat won't let you do that, and they're going to get you out of their comfort zone. So Tatum and Brown, they look great last night, but... Przingis, one for nine from the field. Drew Holiday struggled. When you're talking about a team that's already not deep, you have to have a balanced attack, at least from that starting five, and the bench has got to give them more than 12 points in production, um, you know, on, on that offensive side of things. So as good as Tatum and, and Brown can be as that dynamic duo, they have to get more from the Drew Holidays, from the Przingis. They have to be more efficient. They have to be aggressive because they can't just count on those two guys. The Heat are too deep. The Heat are too good defensively. They're going to start taking away those type of things. So <laughs> those other guys have got to be better. So you know how we keep saying that playoff Tatum commercial just doesn't hit right? Well, here it is. He had four points on one of three from the field in the fourth quarter. It's why I think that commercial is, is poorly written for him. Um, but these are the moments, Chandler, that people, if you don't like Tatum or if you're watching the game, you, you sort of stick with these moments. Why? Yeah, it's like as a star player, you want to see him perform when the game on the line. And it seems like he hasn't done that that good this year. When you see the Mavs play, you see Luka. He at least he's hoisting those shots. He's taking those shots. He's closing the game for them. Jamal Murray, Jokic, they're going through them. Right. Jason Tatum taking, having four points, three shots in the fourth quarter. It's just, it's just not right. He's got to be more aggressive. He's, uh, Damian Lillard, it's the same thing. There's no such thing as a bad shot for these guys. So their, their team, the Celtics, the Bucks, they are okay living and dying with Jason Tatum being aggressive in the fourth quarter. And he sometimes settles for these long twos, which aren't good shots. So <laughs> if I was him, I'm getting to the foul line. I'm trying to get to the basket more. I'm trying to get easy ones go. And I'm going to continue to dominate and continue to do this because this is his team. He's the best player on this team. He's the best player all season long for this team. So he, they need him when it matters. That's the fourth quarter to be uber aggressive. And there's no such thing as a bad shot. I'd like to see him play with his back, back to the basket a little bit more. You know, slow the game down. Catch the ball 18 feet from the rim. You can face up. You're going to be one of the most dangerous guys on the floor when you can face up 18 feet from the rim. You're, you're 6'8". You can shoot over anybody. But like you say, he settles for so many different jump shots. And he'd live and die by it. he got to put a little bit more pressure on, um, on the defense. You mentioned the Kristaps Porzingis of it all. Is that something to worry about? Was that just a, a one-off game? I mean, his average with the with the Mavs last year in the playoffs was double what he had last night. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's supposed to be this difference maker, right? He's right. supposed to be this versatile pick-and-pop guy who can also play to his with his back to the basket. And for whatever reason, he just hasn't had the success, too, in the postseason. So I think when you have a dynamic duo like that, sometimes you can find yourself floating and not getting involved. Porzingis can't be that guy. He's got to demand the ball. When they play pick-and-roll, he switch, he's, uh, and guys switch on him. A lot of times he has a huge mismatch to where he can at least create a double team and swing out of there and get other guys involved, get Derek White shots, get Hauser shots. Pritchard shots, but he's got to he's got to set that tone, and sometimes he just floats, and sometimes he just kind of is very passive, and he can't be that. He is their third best scorer. He's got to be the difference maker offensively in this series because he presents a lot of challenges for the defense with his height and his size and his versatility. So, going one for nine is tough. I don't think that's going to happen often, but the fact that he only has six points, he's not getting to the free throw line more, and with all these mismatches, he's got to be more aggressive because they need him. It can't just be those two. Six points, one of nine. It's tough. Um, the bench has been the thing, right, with the Celtics, but it, it's always been also explained away, like this is just how they do things. They were outscored last night, their bench against Heat's bench. At some point, Lou, is this the problem? I don't think so. I, you, you, we got to consider during the playoffs, right, the, the bench gets, the rotation gets shortened anyway. Mm -hmm. Every team is playing an eight-man rotation basically at this point of the season. So are the Boston Celtics. They just got to get better production out of the guys that are playing. Al Horford, he's a capable, he's a capable four veteran guy. Obviously, you know, he's a championship caliber guy. You know what you're going to get out of Al Horford. Could have played better last night. He's going to be a guy that's going to be able to space the floor for them, be an anchor on defense. He's going to be a, he's going to do a better job of that. Hauser, they use like a specialist. You know, basically this guy can shoot the leather off the basketball when he gets open. They got to create more opportunities for him. And Pritchard, 
Pritchard ha has to be a guy that has to create off the dribble. He's not going to have a lot of scoreless basketball games. They depend on him to score the basketball. So I think when you go to the bench, those are three guys that are more than capable of giving you production. I don't think last night was their night. And, and being outscored 20 to 12 from the bench is not a huge disparity. No. It could be a little better, but, you know, a, a eight point a eight point difference is not a big deal. I think um, most nights Boston would take that and they'll probably win a lot of those games. And having a thin bench is a problem when you're not healthy. And the Boston Celtics are healthy, so it's not an issue because, like Lou said, the, the rotations, they shorten anyway. So most teams are only going seven, eight deep unless you're the, the Thunder who played 13 guys somehow, which is <laughs> insane. But most of the time, it's, it, it's a shortened seven, eight-man rotation anyway. So the fact that they're blessed with health right now, it's, so it hasn't really been a problem for their bench. But a lot of teams don't have that, and a lot of teams have had, you know, unfortunate injuries, but the Boston Celtics don't. So right now it's not an issue. They, they just, just have to have, get production right. from their best starting five in the NBA. Stars can't have off nights when you when you do it that way. I'm glad